Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to another Toddy Walnuts update video. Today, I'm gonna show you guys my medium to small pickups that I got over the last two or three weeks. I picked up a couple of Adam Green titles. One is a rebuy, and one is a new buy to me, though it's been out for a couple years. I picked up a title from Synapse Films, which is kind of a downgrade I guess. I have the steel book of this movie. I wanted to just pick up the Amore case of it because it looks really cool. I got a couple titles from Code Red on Blu-ray. I got a Scorpion. I got a Kino title. I got a couple films from Arrow. Two from Arrow Academy and I got a box set from Arrow Video. I got a figure from NECA. And I'm going to save the best for last. I've got some Jason masks. I'm going to show you guys the masks. I'm really excited about it. And I'm also going to share the link to where you can get your masks. And I want to give a shout out in this video to the last shoegazer. He's a gentleman who has been commenting on my videos recently. I, I'm just kind of new to his channel. He's new to my channel. Very nice guy. Very knowledgeable about his films, especially horror films. He's got a great voice. Um, I, I love to sit and listen to this guy talk about films. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna link him down below. A lot of you guys know him already, but for those of you who do not know The Last Shoegazer, please go check that link down below. Go uh, show him some support, some YouTube love. Give him a sub, comment, tell him Toddy Walnut sent you. Um, so let's get into it here with the Adam Green titles, I guess. The first one is one that I purchased when it first came out on Blu-ray back in, oh, this has been out for a while now, 2010 this came out on Blu-ray. I bought it and I popped it in, watched it with my oldest daughter when this first came out. And the scene, well, for those of you guys who have never seen this movie, I don't really want to give any spoilers but the scene where I'll just say that somebody is laying on the ground and they're surrounded by wolves that scene really got to me and I had to actually pop the movie out and I ended up selling the movie at that time and there's there's just something about a scene like that where you're helpless and um, there's nothing you can do and it's almost like torture and to me, even though I know it's just a movie, it was very realistic. You can hear the, the sound effects of the, the screaming, the gurgling, the snapping uh, of bones and the snapping of teeth. And there was nothing you can do to save the guy. So uh, anyway, I bought this again. I think I picked it up for about like five bucks. And it's just pretty much bare bones. There's, there are some special features. I have not checked those out yet. But, you know, popping this in and watching it again, it's, it's a very good movie. And, um, you know, there's not only were the wolves the enemy, but the weather was also an enemy. And time was also against them. There was a lot of factors going against the three people on the ski lift. And... You guys know how it ended, for those of you who watched it. For those of you who didn't, I'm not going to ruin it for you. But uh, definitely worth a watch. This is Frozen from Adam Green. The next one is also an Adam Green film. This is called Digging Up the Marrow. And this one came out a couple of years ago, like 2014, I think. And um, it's kind of set up to where it's like a documentary. And Adam Green is in the movie as himself. And it's kind of like a found footage slash documentary style film. I popped it in a couple nights ago. And I was really, really tired. And I got maybe like a half hour into it. It's I think it's about 90 minutes, the movie. And it, it was very good. It's 88 minutes, by the way. Um, I just couldn't finish it. But basically, the synopsis of the film is Adam Green is kind of following 
a guy who claims to know where real monsters live and they call it the marrow and you see like a lot of behind the scenes type footage and it's it, it's actually shot very well and I'm looking forward to checking this out in its completion watch it tonight so but I liked everything I saw Ray Wise is in it and he's the guy who claims to know where the monsters live and he's a very fine actor Ray Wise and uh, Adam Green holds his own even though you know Adam Green's kind of a fanboy director and I really like Adam Green he does a really good job in this movie so uh, from what I saw I do recommend this and I'm sure most of you guys have seen this already but I'm a little bit late on this one but I am looking forward to checking that out tonight digging up the marrow the next one is a film I own many different times it's one of my favorites definitely my favorite Argento film and this is the two disc blu-ray edition of Suspiria I like that artwork on the cover there's uh, Jessica Harper this is a very good film and th this was also released as a limited edition steelbook as many of you know and I do own that I just kept it sealed for collectors purposes and this will be one of the viewing copies I have I have Suspiria a couple different times on blu-ray now um, some from overseas some from Germany uh, this is the 4k restoration and I heard that this looks really good I haven't seen synapses print of it yet so but from what I have heard it looks really really good it's crisp clean of course it's the film from 1977 and they are making a remake of this believe it or not I'm gonna give it a shot um, I don't have a lot of hope for the remake Look at Heidi's trying to make a nest again Look at this <laughs> um, there are a bunch of special features. Hey, don't put a hole in my blanket. Hey. She's a good puppy. Um, a 4K restoration of the original uncut, uncensored Italian. Um, camera negative, exclusively done by Synapse Films. With color correction supervised and approved by Suspiria director of photography, Luciano Tavoli. I'm not going to go over all of... Hey, what are you doing? Stop that. Uh, if you guys want to pause it and, and check those out, the special features, I don't want to go over everything, although this will be like a medium length video. I don't want to spend too much time going over special features, but there is a 30 minute Suspiria visual essay written, edited, and narrated by Michael McKenzie. And there are some other uh, featurettes on here. And you know, um, Synapse always does very, very good with their, their transfers and their special features. So let's pop this open, one-handed Todd here, and see if I can get this open. We'll take a look at the reversible cover and stuff. This one has like kind of a rubbery type uh, seal over it. Sometimes they're just easy to pop open. This one's kind of, I don't know, rubbery, stretchy. So let's get into this here. You get the disc, which looks pretty cool. Feature film. And you get the bonus features, which is also on Blu-ray. So therefore you get more content that can be held on a Blu-ray than a DVD. And then you get the original reversible cover, which looks really nice. I love that that original image like that. That's that's probably the best cover. Is just kind of a simplistic yet effective cover with that blood splash. Um, but I, I am going to keep this cover here just because it's a little different. And the slip cover for the steelbook had that image right there, so. And then it also comes with a little catalog with the Synapse Films 2018 product catalog. And it's getting thicker and thicker. There's a lot of, it looked like there was some skin flicks in there. And I'm just going to go ahead and bypass that because I don't know if they have nudity on the covers in there. And I don't want to get flagged. So that is Dario Argento's Suspiria put out by Synapse. Let's see here. The next one we'll go over are the two Code Red titles. 
And I like what they're doing here with these vintage 35 millimeter presentations. And this is a four movie pack, which includes Sultry Sisters in Sin, Super Van, Mama's Dirty Girls, and Piranha Piranha, which is a creature feature film from the 70s, and it was a PG film. I remember that. I've heard uh, mixed reviews about these as far as uh, the picture quality, that they weren't cleaned up exactly squeaky clean like some people feel they need to have. You know, some of these drive-in style grindhouse films don't need to be cleaned up, you know, exactly squeaky clean and flawless. I think some of the charm for these drive-in type films is the impurities of the footage. And a lot of these films don't need to have 4K restorations. You know, I mean, who wants, who cares about Mama's Dirty Girls in 4K? It doesn't really, uh, doesn't need to be done. And a lot of people just like to complain just to hear themselves complain. And that's why I, I got out of a lot of the forums on Facebook. There's so many crybabies. Even some of these guys that own these companies cry and bitch and moan every day. I was tired of hearing it. I even removed some of those guys as my friends on Facebook just because I was tired of hearing all the crying and complaining all the time. But um, we'll pop into this and see what it's... These are four films on one disc. There's no reversible cover. There's no booklet. They were offering these two together at uh, Diabolic DVD for 40 bucks, which I thought was a decent deal. So basically, you know, you're getting them for 20 a piece plus shipping, which I think shipping is five bucks. Whereas if you get these separately, I think they're about like 26 or 27. So you you know, you're saving about, uh, what is that? You got 45 compared to 54. So you're saving about nine bucks, nine or 10 bucks. So let's look at this next one here. This is the All Night Grindhouse Marathon, six films in a two disc set. And they're kind of taking a page from Dark Force, how they've been releasing their drive-in. Oh, I forgot to tell you too that uh, this one was Code Red Spine 163. And this one is Code Red Spine 400, but they're taking a page from Dark Force and it looks a lot like something Dark Force has been putting out since they've been in business, which is not bad because I think I really like what Dark Force is doing. Not only are they putting out quality product, but the uh, shipping is free. And the guy who owns the company is very, very fan friendly or customer friendly, whatever you want to call it. I've, I've talked to him a couple different times about certain things and he's more than happy to help people. So if you have any questions of the products at Dark Force, don't be afraid to ask. He's, uh, he's there to help you out. He wants you guys to buy stuff. So I'm really fumbling here with these uh, sleeves. Let me see if I can get the top here. You know, I really should cut these open before I start recording. I know people have suggested that and I don't know why I don't do it. I just forget. So sorry about that guys and bear with me here. I think this is, well, I don't know if this will be the last one I open today. There's a couple others I wanted to kind of open, but if it's going to take this long, I may just skip it. Okay, so here we go. We got uh, six films, and the six films are The Tale of the Dean's Wife, The Velvet Trap, Marcy, Hot Nights on the Campus, plus two more co-hits. And those two more co-hits are Sex and the College Girl and Shut Up and Deal. And it basically just says, sit back and enjoy six films from the golden age of 60s sexploitation with these smoking all-nighters to keep you all thrilled. And you just, uh, you get the discs and no reversible cover, no booklet or anything, so. 
that is that. The next one I picked up is a, I guess, an upgrade. I do have this on Blu-ray already, but I heard this transfer looks a little bit better. MGM put it out as Ducky Sucker, which was also known as a Fistful of Dynamite. Now Kino is putting it out as a Fistful of Dynamite, also known as Ducky Sucker. I do like the cover. I like what Kino has been doing. This is a Sergio Leone film. 1971 it's a um, James Coburn Western there's a lot of special features here too and some people think that this is a comedy but it's I guess there are some comedic tones in it but it's not really a comedy Western I think the title duck you sucker kind of portrays itself to be a comedy but uh, but there are some pretty funny scenes though some some uh, a little bit of comedy mixed in with the uh, spaghetti western so and the next one here is the church dario argento presents a uh, michele suave i believe is how you pronounce it um i know that they're going to be releasing a deluxe edition of this down the road at ronin flicks but i just wanted to pick this up and it, it's really really cheap now on amazon i think you can get this for about 10 bucks or less brand new so um can never have too many, you know, Argento or Suave films, especially under ten bucks. I'll buy it, I'll, and I'll get the uh, deluxe edition when that comes out too. So, because that'll have a slip cover and all that stuff. Um, we'll get into the Arrow Academy titles. I have two of them. These were on sale, and the first one it's like a film noir slash western called Terror in a Texas Town. And I'll pop into this one and we'll take a look. And it says, for his 41st and final feature film, Joseph H. Lewis was able to combine the two genres in which he had excelled. The man in the director's chair for My Name is Julia Ross, Gun Crazy, and The Big Combo, Lewis was one of the all-time greats in film noir. But he was also a fine director of westerns, having made A Lawless Street, 7th Calvary, and The Halliday Brand, all of which, especially the last, remain underrated. Terror in a Texas Town would bring his noir sensibilities to the American West, resulting in one of his finest works. So I, I've been meaning to check this out. It's been out for a while from Arrow. The film came out in 1958, and I think this was released in early 2017. So it's been out for about like a year, I think. And now it's, it was one of their sale items when uh, Arrow had a flash sale a couple weeks ago. I don't remember what I paid for it, but it was pretty cheap. So this is Region A, and if you guys would like to pause, where am I here? Pause and uh, read those special features. You can do that on your own time. And it has one of these little zip strips on the bottom. So let's see if we can pop into it. Sometimes you can go through and open things with ease, and then sometimes every single edition wants to fight you. I think from now on though, I am gonna pre-open these before I start the video. So there you got the, uh, let's take a look at the spine again. Cut my finger. I think I cut my finger when I was trying to open up that freaking, what was that? Uh, Code Red title. So this one does have the reversible cover and it says Iron Hooked Fury Sterling Hayden in Terror in a Texas Town. It does come with the book. It's a pretty decent sized book. And it's about, let's see, about almost 20 pages with stills and info on the film. So I'm looking forward to checking this one out. As a fan of Westerns and film noir, I'd like to see how they kind of blend the two together. Sounds like a Sounds like a good watch to me. So that's Terror in a Texas Town. I'm gonna take a quick sip of some green tea here, guys. Hold on one second. All right. The next one I opened up earlier. This is called The Big Knife, starring Jack Palance. Shelley Winters is also in here.
Mere months after delivering one of the definitive examples of film noir with Kiss Me Deadly, Robert Aldrich brought a noir flavor to the Hollywood with his classic adaptation of Clifford Odette's stage play, The Big Knife. And this is a film that came out in 1955 and this was released in 2017. These last two that I showed you, Terror in a Texas Town and The Big Knife, must not have been big sellers because they've only been out for about a year and already they're being offered as sale items. So there is the reversible cover, which I really like. And then this one also does come with the booklet. This booklet's a little bit thicker. I think this is probably 30 plus pages, almost, yeah, 40 pages. There's a young Jack Palance. Shelley Winters. It's hard to see. I'm really looking forward to checking this one out as well. I love the classic films from the 50s and 60s. So there you go. That is The Big Knife. And then I also picked up another Argento box set. And this is called Deep Red, which this is the Region A edition. I also already did have the Region B that came out last year. And there's a couple subtle differences, not, not very much of a difference, but this edition here, Region B, has a bonus CD soundtrack, which was a 28 sound or 28 song soundtrack, and it also had the export version of the film on 4K, but it had kind of a flimsy packaging for the film. And then the Region A has the nice heavy duty thick case like they've been putting out, but this one does not include. Well, first of all, this is a three disc set, the Region B. Region A is a two disc set and it doesn't have the soundtrack. So, well, I take that back. They both do have the export version on disc two. And I was asked by a fellow YouTuber if this was only in Italian language for the uncut or the Italian cut of the film. And uh, let's see, the original Italian soundtrack, let me see here. High definition Blu-ray, presentation of two versions of the film. You get the original Italian soundtrack and you get an original English soundtrack. So you can watch it either in Italian or in English. It also does have English subtitles for the Italian soundtrack, or you can have optional English subtitles for the English soundtrack. Plus, I think both, both editions had six postcards, lobby-sized, and they both have the reversible fold-out poster, and limited edition booklet featuring writings by Michael J. Coven. So basically, those were the little differences. You know, you get, um, you get a bonus disc for region B. You get a thicker quality box for region A. You get uh, both editions get the book, both editions get the poster, and both editions do get the export version of the film. So the only difference, or the I should say the biggest difference is the region B is out of print and I think it's around a hundred bucks for this one. And this one, region A, you can probably still get it around 30 bucks, I think, somewhere around there. So those were my Arrow video titles. I have a NECA figure I'm gonna show you guys and then I'm gonna show some Jason masks at the end here. This is the Texas Chainsaw Nubbins, who was the hitchhiker in part one, and the corpse puppet that he used. Um, I think the corpse puppet was supposed to be Nubbins. I, I can't remember now. But you remember the, the hitchhiker who hops in the van and cuts himself with that straight razor? With um, Franklin's straight razor? 
and then they end up kicking him out and he sp slaps blood all over the side of their uh, VW bus. He had the camera, he was taking pictures, trying to charge people. And that detail's pretty cool. Now that Toys R Us is out of business, I have to buy my figures online, so I picked this up on Amazon. They were the cheapest. And you can see that the likeness is pretty good for Nubbins, who was the hitchhiker. And here in the back, you have uh, the hitchhiker and Nubbins puppet. So I do believe that you can see Chop Top in the background. They have him kind of posed as he's dancing with the Nubbins puppet. I think the Nubbins puppet is the hitchhiker. And down at the bottom it says, Who will survive when five friends on a road trip cross paths with a demented family of cannibals? Nubbins the hitchhiker is the first member of the Sawyer clan to appear, with his brother Leatherface close behind. And a bizarre bloodbath begins. Although Nubbins meets a gory end, his mortal remains are welcomed back into the Sawyer family and become a puppet-like pal for his older brother Chop Top. Okay, so I, was, I didn't read that before. So that's what it was. So that must be in part two. You can see the Nubbins puppet. I never really noticed that before. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's get into the last little bit of my pickups for the last couple weeks. These actually just came in today, and that's what I was kind of waiting for before I did this little update. I got a, I got four masks from a company called, let's see where, I know he left his uh, business card in one of these. The guy's name is Rick, and I'm gonna give you guys his information because he's a really nice guy. I first found out about Rick and 13X Studios from a fellow YouTuber named Adam the Woo. He had a live stream one, uh, it was like about a month ago, I think, or so. I, I could be wrong about that. But he was there with Tampa J, Adventure, Adventures by George, Splore and Ryan, a lot of the guys who are some of my favorite YouTubers. I, I was watching them, and they met up with Rick at this convention. And Rick has all these amazing masks that he makes. He creates these by hand. And if you go to his, his studio, 13xstudios at gmx.com, you can check him out on Instagram, Etsy, Facebook, Twitter, or go to 13xstudios.com. And he's got a bunch of stuff on his website. You guys are going to love it. So I will link that stuff down below too, in case you guys want to go ahead and just click it from there. But I'll show you the four masks that I picked up. And the first one here is from part three. And Rick, uh, he does an amazing job. He creates these and he makes them look weathered. And he, I think he really does a great job on these masks. I also want to give a shout out to Tampa J because he was just recently out there with Rick um, in Orlando at another convention. Um, I think it was last Friday or Saturday, I can't remember. But uh, Tampa J and Adam the Woo were the two guys who really told me about Rick. So I'm, I'm thankful to you guys if you're watching Jay. I'm pretty sure Adam doesn't watch my videos, but I think Jay does sometimes. So big ups to you, Jay. Appreciate you, man. And uh, there's his signature 13X Rick. That's part three. I've never owned a part three mask before. I do have um, four or five. Um, I think four or five in the remake. Well, here's another part five, and this one's actually going to be a gift to my friend Tampa J. This one looks really cool. It has that weathered look. You can get this one. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can get this mask. You can get it like uh, bright white and clean, like it's never been worn with the blue on it. Or you can get it weathered, like it's been through hell and back. And I think it looks better when it's weathered. Although these have never been worn, it's just made to look like that. And again, it's it's signed on the back by Rick. So Tampa J, this one, funny enough, it came from Orlando to Wisconsin, and now it's going to be going from Wisconsin to you. So be on the lookout for this one. I'll probably ship it this weekend to you as a token of my appreciation for your friendship. Here is a part six. I really love this one when I saw it in the shop. This is the bullet hole. It's 
made to look like a, a bullet just ripped through there and it's really nice and then you can see where uh, Jason was hit by the axe earlier in the franchise some of the blood from some of the battle damage that he's had since part six and finally I think this is gonna be my my favorite one let me get one more sip I got cotton mouth right now so Jason takes Manhattan this is the VHS tape and Rick came up with a design to make a mask that looks like that and I love it I kept saying part seven in my Friday the 13th video I'm sorry about that but this is part eight and check this out what Rick Rick made this and how cool is that that is awesome there's another one I want to order from Rick too it's a Freddy versus Jason battle damage mask and it's got four lines coming across the face and it, it's freaking awesome there's a couple other ones I'd like to get but uh, this is my favorite I think so far and it's gonna be hard to beat that one I just love the the idea that he came up with to put that out like that and then you know, Tampa J this is this is the one that's coming to you Tampa J and he, he said that's his favorite that's the Roy mask that's the uh, red herring episode part five which I do like the movie I like part five um, but that was it guys that was my little haul let me do a like a little recap here and let me know what you guys picked up please definitely go check out 13x studios definitely check out the last shoegazer and I will link Tampa J again for giving me the heads up about or to kind of give me a reminder about Rick's 13x studios I was gonna order some masks earlier and I kind of forgot about it I put it on the back burner and then when I saw Jay there in, in Orlando over the last weekend I knew I had to uh, pull the trigger on that so the big knife terror in a Texas town the four movie set from code red frozen very good movie I'm glad I bought it again and watched it through it has a very depressing ending it doesn't leave you satisfied at all but it's a very good movie Suspiria everybody should own that digging up the marrow looking forward to checking that out tonight it has a lot of potential I really liked what I saw the church fistful of dynamite this is a six movie grindhouse marathon in deep red and hitchhiker nubbins and Jason masks galore so if you do go talk to Rick tell him Adam or Tampa J or Toddy Walnut sent you he's an excellent dude he'll take care of you thanks for watching guys see you in the next video